Hume said about expert intuitive types in his book Psychological Types is that they're always looking for the next thing, looking beyond the horizon. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob and thank you so much for listening to my podcast. On Fireside Personality Chats, I try to bring the theory of Jungian typology more down to earth through portraits and stories, thereby making typology more relevant and applicable to the everyday person. A few days ago I released an episode entitled Portrait of an NFP, which told the story of a fictional NFP just to show you how ENFP preferences can show up in a particular, in that case, fictional life. At the end of the episode, I offered a brief commentary explaining why Ron, the ENFP character, acted the way he did in life as ENFP preferences. I'm recording this episode for those of you who want to dive a little bit more deeply into the ENFP dynamics. Before we begin, just a few things to keep in mind. I'm going to be explaining why his behaviors are relevant, are relevant to his ENFP preferences, but this should not be taken as me trying to quote-unquote prove that he's an ENFP. I'm analyzing his life through the framework, the assumption that he's an ENFP. So make sure you understand that distinction. Um, Also, I'm going to be using some shorthand. I know that not all of my audience is familiar with that. So, if you hear me say N-E, that's capital N, lowercase e, N-E, that means extroverted intuition. Um, F-I, capital F, lowercase i, that's introverted feeling. If I say T-E, that's capital T, lowercase e, that's extroverted thinking, and if I say SI, that's capital S, lowercase i, that's introverted sensing. Those are the four main cognitive function attitudes in the ENFP function stack in that order that I just presented them. Alright, so this is going to be a a beat-by-beat commentary. Ron is a young man with little in the way of discipline, but a great deal in the way of dreams and ideas. Alright, so Ron's a young man. That's not important, like, age is irrelevant to your cognitive type. Um, Little in the way of discipline. That goes to show his lower SI and lower TE. So SI, that's about... In this case, it's relevant to routines, habits, um, thoroughness, and TE was, would be like a structure in the, in, in the outer world. But a great deal in the way of dreams and ideas. So this mainly points to his NE, which would be his dominant function as an ENFP. And at least to me, the word dreams kind of... It's, it's more feeling than just, like, ideas, which can count just, like, this cold, innovative, whatever. Um, so that also points to his auxiliary FI. He's had numerous jobs in the past five years, from the boring ones of fast food joints and at retail shops, to the more meaningful ones such as working as a video editor and a freelance writer, to the fun and unique jobs such as playing catch with seals at the circus. Um... Don't pay too much attention to what the jobs actually are. More important that he's had so many jobs in a relatively small number of years because of his expert intuition. So what what Carl Jung said about expert intuitive types in his book Psychological Types is that they're always looking for the next thing, looking beyond the horizon. Any is expert in, intuitive types are ideationalists, if that's the word it is now, um, uh, visionaries, and I don't remember if this was said by Isabel Briggs Myers herself in the book, or if she was quoting or paraphrasing, I I think it was the latter. The 
the expert intuitive type, so either the ENFP or the ENTP, they're going to feel more fulfilled looking forward to the next thing. The, 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 the prospect of what could come next is more satisfying to them than the actual manifestation of that thing. So even when a job feels like a perfect fit for him, Ron rarely lasts more than a couple of months before searching for the next gig. All right, so why would why would a job feel like a perfect fit for him? Because he's his and he is going to perceive it, and he's going to. So so any it's 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 a perceiving function, which means that in some of the, it's compulsory for the the ENP to to pursue that. All right, so even when job feels like perfect fit for him, Ron really lasts more than a couple of months. That goes back to the fact that any by nature finds the prospect more satisfying than the substance. And in Ron's case, any of feats probably also because he doesn't actually have any real personal interest by way of FI in it. FI is about core values and hierarchy of values. Um, and in fact, sorry, continuing the story, and in fact, Ron more often than not finds the dream of the next job more fulfilling than the job itself. That's what I was explaining earlier about any preferring the prospect over the substance of the thing. <laughs> continuing, although Ron most of the time leaves his job of his own accord, he has been terminated once or twice. Right, so, again, Ron leaves his job because of any. He gets bored, needs on something else. Right, but he has been terminated once or twice. This is largely because Ron is pathologically disorganized. I I threw pathological for exaggerations. It's not. I'm not trying to say that ENFPs or ENXPs are like mentally ill in any way because they're disorganized. So just to be clear about that. Absolutely despises his routine. That goes to his inferior SI and his one impulsive, which is which goes to I guess his inferior SI and also his dominant any. Um important to remember that um cognitive functions work in opposite, so N E is the polar opposite of SI. Um he doesn't keep a schedule. He forgets to set his morning alarm half the time, and even when he does, he often forgets to plug in his near dead phone before he went to sleep. That by the time morning comes, his phone is dead and thus no alarm. Alright, so that just goes to his, again, to his low SI. Um, his failure to remember to plug in his phone might go to, also go to low, maybe go to tertiary TE, because TE is, because thinking is about, one facet of thinking is cause and effect, right? And TE is cause and effect in the outer world, so if, if Ron has low TE, then he might not, he won't, he won't be aware of the consequences of not playing this phone. And then, too tedious. Um, SI, SI types are painstakingly thorough. They don't mind tedious work. In fact, they might not even call it tedious. On the other hand, he frequently takes liberties with procedures and whatnot at work. That I think that can be attributed to his high NE, which has a tendency to irritate more procedures conscious supervisors such as ESTJ Jill. So the ESTJ. Oh, and yes, by the way, this, this jail is the same one that appeared in my analytical versus holistic approaches to typology episode. Um, so the, the ESTJ, their cognitive functions are TE, SI, NE, FI. Um, so TE, that's all, that's about thinking structures in the in the real world. And then SI is about routine, 
habits, the way it's been done. So ESTJ is going to be very, not, not necessarily politically conservative, but conservative in the sense that they're not going to be open to just change in the way that things are done. Alright, so continuing. That was when Ron worked for Nile Shipping Company, a sort of middleman between mom and pop shop owners and their consumers. Um, oh, just to be clear, when I say their consumers, I'm not saying that the consumers like eat the mom and pop shop owners, I'm saying that they purchase their wares. The name inspired by the river in North Africa, obviously the Nile River. <laughs> And also the last name of the company's founder, Jonathan Niles. The Niles Shipping Company takes the whole idea of shipping, literally. Moving forward a bit. So that's where Ron comes in. Um, he's a driver whose job it is to help unload the packages from the boat and then load them onto his pickup truck. From there, he delivers them to the consumer's homes in that area. Day after day, that's his job. Now, it only must arrive at the dock at 9 a.m., Monday through Saturday. The packages have to be loaded a certain way, and its driving route through the area has been mandated and is unchangeable. Okay, mandated and unchangeable. I'm gonna... That can be attributed to Jill's ESDJ preferences for reasons discussed above. Within weeks, he feels exhausted by his... this. Overly structured workplace which threatens to extinguish his creativity, the spark of who he is as a person. It's a, it's a very SI type environment, um, S-I-T-E, S-I slash S-I-T-E environment. Um, it's arrive 9 a.m. on the dot, obviously. <laughs> Monday, th that's six days a week. Um, have to be loaded a certain way, so you can't be creative in that regard. Um, driving route, you, 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 he can't change it up, he has to do the exact same thing. So it's basically like, essentially the exact same thing, six days a week. Which is not enjoyable for an expert intuitive type. Right, so this threatens his creativity, the spark of who he is as a person, so in that final sentence, Spark Who Is As A Person, I'm trying to allude to something that I, like I told you loosely, which is that your dominant function is sort of in the center of your ego complex in some way. So when you, when you use your dominant function, you're going to be feeling most like yourself. Uh, N.E., it says, Quote, may be artistic, scientific, mechanical, inventive, industrial, commercial, social, political, or adventurous, close quote. And then, and I, it says, quote, may be creative in any field, artistic, literary, scientific, inventive, philosophical, or religious, close quote. That's Gifts to Frame, page 81. Um, so as you can see, creativity is in some sense, more essential to N.I. than it is to any. But any is still creative, that's it. intuition is by nature creative. All right. As a young boy in elementary school, he would often gaze out the window or at some blank wall while his mind entertained the most wonderful notions of a life beyond the four walls of the schoolhouse. All right, so, kind of a daydreamer. Um, notice he's not looking around. If he were an expert sensing type, that's S.E., he would be more likely to look around because SE is, by nature, concerned with the immediate environment um, of of all types. The expert sensing type is most likely to perceive the world as it really is, as far as the whole ocular system can perceive it. But Ron, who is an EFB, does not have expert sensing, he has interpreted sensing, which isn't the same thing. The simplest, most unseen illustration in a textbook still has part to set his imagination in motion. Once, when a picture of the Benz patent motor car, model number one, that's the first automobile, as I became aware of by a quick and therefore totally reliable Google search. He found himself wondering if he could re recreate the model with some 2x4s, a bicycle, and a folding chair. Um, 
I have no idea if you can. At the very beginning of summer break, Ron made the Ronald non-patent pedal car model number one. Of course, it was a far cry from its inspiration and ran human energy by pedaling instead of gasoline. Alright, um... So... That's just an example of any in motion. The his he he saw the picture of the of the motor car, right? And I thought this gives him an idea of something I can do in the real world. So he did that. Um, of course, it's a far cry from the way I read that. Um, all the same, Ron was proud of what he'd imagined and accomplished. Just that's just I think anyone would would be proud of that. <laughs> Then again, as you would expect, by the time summer vacation was coming to a close, Ron had lost interest in his pedal car. Again, the any, the idea is m better than the fulfillment of the idea. The prospect more satisfying than the substance, the manifestation of the prospect. Years later, after Ron had worked for Niles Shipping Company for two or three weeks, he spent one evening perusing through the photo albums and happened upon a photo of the Ronald non-patent Pedal Car Model Number One. All right, so why is he perusing through the photo albums? This is because types with lower, with I guess inverted sensing no, but I think it's actually lower inverted sensing, such as the INTP, INFP, ENFP, and ENTP. They, they have SI, but it's not something that they show up with a lot, so um, they might use, SI will be more personal to them, sentimental, um, I, um, I don't feel equipped to fully explain the dynamics at this point. This gave him the idea to make a few, idea, see, she sees it idea. Um, make a few changes in the way he did, he did things at work. Once he had jotted his, he jotted his ideas down, he called a few of his friends, including ESGB Dave. And yes, this ESGB is the same Dave as the, the character who shows up in my first episode, um, The Self-Concept. He took the following Saturday off, much to Jill's chagrin, and showed Dave and his other friends a picture of his pedal car. Then, unable to contain his excitement, okay, why is he unable, unable to contain his excitement? Is it because he's a feeling type? No, it's because he's an extrovert. That's not what he means in Jungian typology. In, in Jungian typology, the introverted type, their cognitive stays more focused inward toward their feelings, their ideas, their thoughts memories. The extrovert is more focused outwardly towards what's around them, potentials in the real world, which is why, never mind, um, structures, um, the, the, the group, harmony, or lack thereof. So, that's what there's a main difference, um, generally extroverts are more, they, this is, something I read on not a typology article. Um, experts are usually better at thinking on their feet. Um, introverts, because introverts process information more deeply, they're going to have more difficult time at word retrieval oftentimes. Um, experts have a better kind of working memory. Introverts have a better, I guess, more permanent memory. That's what I've read anyways. Um, oh. The reason I brought this up was um, experts are usually more emotive than introverts. So that's why Ron is unable to contain his excitement. Now, to be sure, can an introvert ever feel such that they can't contain their excitement? As, yes, they can, but it's going to be more common for the extrovert. Okay, then, unable to contain his excitement, he explained that they would make a fleet of these. Only this time, there would be an enhancement stored space. <laughs> when Ron explained the purpose behind this, his ICJ co-worker, John, said dryly, So you want more people to 
could do more work to deliver the same number of packages. For the I3J, that's, as you can tell, the opposite type of the ENFP. Um, so S I T E F I N E. Even more than the E3J, the I3J is going to be even more focused, more concerned with the status quo, keeping things the way they are. The, when the I3J is going to be someone who says, if it ain't broken, then don't fix it. On Monday, Ron, Dave, and other two guys, they don't get names, so I don't know what they are, show up at the NSC dock with their pedal cars. John and Mr. Bellman, so naturally is not, not able to join them. Um, rather than loading the packages onto the pickup truck, they load the packages onto their pedal cars. In this manner, Ron is able to experience a change at work, satisfy that any, giving a reprieve monotony of his job. All was going well until he returned to the dock to chat with John at the end of the day. Um, chat with John at the end of the day. Um, Alright, so Ron comes to chat with John. So I said earlier that expiration is not the same thing as getting an energy from being with people. In the Jungian system, It's that's a true definition in like say the big five, I, I believe, but but not in Jungian typology. So different systems, different definitions. Fair enough? Okay. Um, but Ron as extra intuitive type, he's one of, one of the things about extra intuition is often that they're gonna be in, they're going to enjoy bouncing ideas off of other people. Which I don't know why he would interact with an ICJ. Um Maybe there's something deeper. It could also be, remember Ron's auxiliary function is inverted feeling, right? FI. So he might feel type of bond attachment to John, who, by the way, has tertiary FI, so... Okay, just point that out. That's kind of, dare I say, stereotypically is to J behavior. Jill was probably in an FI group that day, and so she hastily fired Ron. I'm kind of, don't take that too seriously, but one of the elements of type theory is that under stress, a, a type can enter into the grip of their inferior function, which in Jill's case is an ENCJ, would be FI, and manifest as the opposite type, but in an unhealthy way. So Jill, I guess, is manifesting as an unhealthy INFP in this instance. I say probably because, no, no, maybe, I don't know. Alright, that termination affected Ron deeply. Why could he not have just done his job? Why couldn't he just obey his marching orders? Why couldn't he just follow a routine? Why couldn't he use a planner? Why couldn't he even hold down a job? He felt that he would never find a job that satisfied him. Alright, so, why can you follow a routine? Why can you use a planner? Why can you do a Um, Oftentimes, people will be, I guess, self-conscious of their inability to use, to do things, to use their inferior function well, oftentimes. So for Ron, that's SI, so he's, he can be self-conscious of that. He thought that he would never find a job that satisfied him. But, um, again, any any type can feel that way, right? Um, but in, in Ron's case, I would probably say that's due to his auxiliary FI. FI wants, one of the elements of FI is living life according to internal values even the ones that promise to satisfy him fall short of his expectations. And why these promise to satisfy him? Because the, the idea is almost intrinsically motivating to the N-E type. N-E, not N-E, the, the letters, you know what I mean. <laughs> the dream sometimes felt more real than the experience. 
Ron was too tired and distraught to face his questions at night, so he turned to YouTube videos of cute animals, which have definitely been clinically proven to be therapeutic. A little bit of my dry humor there. He felt better, at least on the surface, until watching a video of seals playing with a beach ball. I... I foreshadowed that above. He imagined himself playing catch with all those seals, maybe at a circus. He might as well have worked at a circus. After all, he was essentially a clown. Um, Ron went to a well-known search, job search website that runs with Lynn Reed. I wonder what that is, but you can guess. And queried for circus jobs. So this is interesting. So, is Ron still acting in his ENF ENFP preferences because he gets idea and then he thinks, okay, how can I put this idea into action? But it's not from his usual... He's not doing out of any enthusiasm, which is usual for his... To, to his nature. He's, after an hour or so of scrolling and searching, found an opening for a seal performer at a traveling... S okay. When I, when I wrote that, I pictured, like, a Navy SEAL performing in a circus. I don't know what that looked like. Which just so happened to be coming to his town in the next week. Ron applied, and the ringmaster asked him to audition that coming Wednesday evening. Although Ron didn't prepare, and has never been athletic at all, he somehow blew away the ringmaster himself with his performance. This is kind of unexpected, theoretically, because Ron isn't any type who doesn't have SE. He's, you wouldn't expect him to be good at this type of thing. And honestly, like, why is he? The answer is simple, because I needed him to be, because I'm writing the story. <laughs> and, oh, of course, the seals enjoy playing with him too, for what's worth. And so, Ron got the job, and for eight weeks he traveled with the circus, and each evening his job's to catch with seals. This was certainly a more, lot more interesting than his previous job, and the ringmaster was much more open and lenient than Jill, i.e. Robin was probably able to play catch differently each time. It's not like, first you have to throw two, seal one, then seal three, then seal four, then seal two, then seal five, then whatever, which is what Jill would probably have him do. Not to say that all ECJs would do that, I'm just saying that this particular ECJ named Jill would do that. As a result, Ron enjoyed doing this a lot more than any of his previous jobs. But ultimately, his job was the same day after day, playing catch with seals. Ever and always dissatisfied with his present reality, Ron grew more and more bored. Something about intuitive types in general is that they're by nature dissatisfied with the way things are. They want to change things. In the case of NE, it's usually by changing actually how, but actually changing the what is. In the case of an I, it's usually about changing how you look at something. So an eye type, for example, might see a simple flower and apply some quasi-mystical meaning to it from their NI. One afternoon during this time, Ron entered the library and asked Margaret, the reference librarian for literature and finding satisfactory jobs. Margaret asked about his conundrum and explained in disorganized, emotive fashion, disorganized because of his NE, and emotive because he's an extrovert. And a feeling type, but mainly because of he's an extrovert. His career history from the day he dropped off college. I must say that all ENFPs are all extrovert and two types drop off college. No. I'm not. You can choose to not act in accordance with your preferences. But because this is kind of an archetypal story, I'm trying to show the general patterns of the ENFP in a real, quote unquote, real fictional life. So, Ron's kind of acting as a quintessential ENFP by dropping out of college because he probably got bored. Okay, when he. Margaret listened closely and patiently to Ron's rant. Um, when he finished, she thought for a moment and said, It seems to me that you keep on chasing the next thing. No kidding. But for whatever reason, you expect it to be more meaningful than the current thing. That's because of his zany. 
but there's no guarantee of that being true. If you want the next thing to have any real meaning or value, you're going to have to find something that mean that's meaningful to you, personally. You can't chase after all the ideas that enter into your mind. You have to decide what grips your soul, what attracts the very essence of your being. The, the source, as it were, of this wisdom, I suppose, was from what Myers says in gets different in regards to the any type. She says that they must develop their judgment, the entry of types. So, in case of the ENFP, in order to not just chase up every possibility, the ENFP needs to understand what's actually meaningful to him personally. So, Margaret is serving to awaken his auxiliary FI. Um, interesting about the auxiliary function, it's as the auxiliary function, it's it plays an assistive role to the dominant function. So, it's like the 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 um, the advisor to the dominant function. In the case of the ENFP, the dominant the ENFP by nature is trying to exp think about possibilities, explore things, right? Ideas, whatever. Um, then the auxiliary FI kind of tames that ideational spirit and asks, what's important to you? You can't chase it after all the ideas that enter into your mind. You have to decide what grips your soul, what attracts the very essence of your being. Margaret asked him what that was for him, but he could not for the life of him say, um, this is because Ron has not developed his interpreted feeling auxiliary function. He's been very much N-E. And then, I guess, also somewhat T-E, like the T-E helps him to build pedal cars, for example. Um, oftentimes, it, it's it's not correct to say that you, you develop your cognitive functions in order. Oftentimes, your dominant is what you, just like, the water, I suppose, that you swim in, if you were a fish. Then your tertiary is, you often think it's better than it actually is. Then your auxiliary, that's, sometimes people call that the growth function. So, the ENFP, to, to grow cognitively, it's about the, the FI function. Okay. Um... Everything Ron did fell short of his ideals and expectations. The enthusiasm he'd had for every job had melted in the oppressive sound of monotony and repetition. Um, right, you can't escape routine, repetition and routine, said Margaret, but if you can tolerate these things, then maybe you can find a job in which you're free to use your greatest talent, your creativity, your, your ability to see potential in the smallest of people and the smallest of things potential because that's just the way the extra in intuitive works. They see potential. Ron reflected on this and felt, notice what I say felt, not thought, or conclude I say felt, that the librarian was right. Within six months, he had established a career as a life coach or something like that. To this day, he helps people who feel stuck in a rut discover what their passion is, and pursue it to the degree possible. Myers says of the, of the ENFP that ENFPs are often drawn to counseling, so as a life coach, this, it's, it's not counseling in the traditional sense of like talk therapy, but it's, it's similar. In fact, it's very unable to change its nature. Ron still holds other part-time gigs that change from short time to short time but it is in this more permanent job in which he finds deeper or personal meaning. Fiend, I mean, the end. <laughs> um, he finds this is because his FI is invested in this endeavor. Right, so that's a commentary on the EA. NF -E ENFP personality type as the preferences manifest in this archetypal story of a fictional ENFP by the name of Ronald.
thank you for listening, everyone. I know I've been putting a lot of content out this week. I think this is the fifth episode since Friday. Um, part of that was because I had a lot of energy from this new, exciting project. Um, part of it was because I, I want to get as much content out right away to get the podcast having some traction. Um, but I think from now, probably expect usually two episodes a week at most. Probably the the story, the portrait, and then a commentary. I, I might combine those two, just because the story is usually only like ten minutes. But I might do that, so it might be one episode a week. Maybe also a bonus episode sometimes, in which I discuss something more directly. For example, I'm working, kind of working, on, a, on an article entitled The Ego, Another Way to Approach Personality Typology. More on that later? Maybe, maybe not. All right, um, that's all for today. Thank you again for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob and thank you so much for listening to my podcast. On Fireside Personality Chats, I try to bring the theory of Jungian typology more down to earth through portraits and stories, thereby making typology more relevant and applicable to the everyday person.